Hello everyone, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. And uh, yesterday I went to a Barnes & Noble and I was just checking out some of the baseball books and things like that. And I did end up getting the, uh, the new uh, baseball uh, Beckett card price guide. This is the 46th edition, 2024 edition. And um, just to give you a, a quick uh, review, if you're not into the, 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 the modern stuff, don't, don't bother with it. Don't get it. You know, that's, that's my, my review. The, the reason I got it was you know, I was looking for some pre-war type stuff. They didn't have anything like that there, at least not at the store. And I got it because the last one that I had was this one here. I had this old one, and this is the 21st edition. And this was from 1999. And I said, you know what? It's been 25 years since I've gotten one of these Beckett books. So I'll go ahead and get the new one just to see what's in there and stuff. The issue is that uh, the cars I'm interested in, in really are, are these prior to 1999. This is a much smaller book. As you can see, a lot less sets, a lot less stuff. Here it says 2,000 card sets. Here it's like 2.9 million. So, uh, you know, if you're into some of the, the newer stuff, the modern stuff, the shiny stuff, the, you know, the gold cards and the refractors, this will work for you because it's got all the new stuff and, you know, the list of them, the checklist of all, you know, all of that, that stuff. And it tells you, you know, what they uh, would be worth you know, the, 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 the gold or the red version, you know, 10 times, 20 times, that type of stuff. So, but if you're into the vintage stuff, um, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, you know, I better off going and buying some of the older ones like this one, which is a little bit, has the same information, easier to read with more pictures because it had less sets or this really doesn't have pictures. As you can see, there are no pictures because it just doesn't fit. Just too much, too many cards, you know? But if you look at stuff like, you know, you know, it's got like, you know, chrome refractors and then it tells you the stars and all that and all the checklists. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, you know, then, you know, this may be good for you. It's got so many of those inserts, so, but you know, I figured 25 years been since I bought a new edition, so I got it. And I was looking through it. And uh, there are some changes. And I think the main change that I saw, at least for the vintage, and I'll show you this real quick here. I had it marked here. So it's got uh, all of the, it's got all the stuff from the, you know, T2, T205s and, 52 tops and all that stuff. So it does ha have all of that. I know it's hard for you guys to see that. But none of that really has changed. The only thing really that I did see that changed, and I think it's a big change, is this. Check it out. The leaf set is now 49 leaf in the book. 49 leaf, not 48 leaf, not 48, 49 leaf. They finally changed it to the 49 leaf set and the 49 leaf premiums, which is what it was. How could you have, they've always had the 49 leaf premiums and then 48, 49 leaf. It didn't make sense. They were distributed in the same boxes. So that is a big change that I saw in this book that was not in the old Beckett book. So. I think now that, uh, that Beckett calls it 49 leaf, I think we can all call it 49 leaf. And then you got the 49 leaf premiums over here. And then you've got uh, all the rest of the, the cards. And you can see you know, the, the, the prices that they have. So they have the uh, page rookie card at 25,000 to 60,000, which is, you know, where it should be. 
So that's the biggest card in the whole set. So anyway, I wanted to uh, just share that the new uh, baseball card, the Beckett uh, price guide. So just looking through it, wanted to share. The biggest thing I saw was that they did change that from this, which is a 48, 49 leaf to the 49 leaf. So the main thing I wanted to talk about today was that, um, you know, sometimes you go to, to the, the card shows or card shops, and especially when you go to the big card shows, and, and you buy a few cards, you know, like, like, like I bought this card, you know. So when you buy a nice card like this, you kind of forget about some of the other cards that you have because you really start looking at it. It's a, the new card that you got. That's the new kid on the block, you know. And when I went to the Strongsville show, and I'll show this one too. So this is the other one that I had that I actually got this one graded a few weeks ago if you didn't see it on my, on my grading. So I have a couple of these. One, I'll probably be trading this one at the National, talking about card shows. So, um, and these are the Armando Marsan's cards. And this is Marsan's when he was at Cincinnati when they first recruit, got him and they brought him onto the team in 1912. And I said the story on the last uh, video. He wanted to leave Cincinnati, he didn't want to be owned by that team and he went and he actually uh, fought the system. And it says here the first native born Cuban player to break into the majors. Armando Marsan's Rafael Almeida, who joins the Cincinnati team. And it talks about him, son of a wealthy resident of Havana and comes from an old Spanish family. He learned to play the, the game in Cuba and came to the United States in 1910. And then uh, he was sold to Cincinnati. He didn't want to be sold. He didn't want to stay there. So he went the free agency route. In those days, you couldn't. So he was kicked out of the league and he had to go play for the, he eventually went to play for the St. Louis Federals. And he was the first player to, uh, to fight the system and then he ended up winning in court so that other players were also able to uh, switch teams. This is all before Lou Brock. So that's his, the Cracker Jack that I got. And it talks about it in the back here. So this is his 1912 card, and this is 1915 card. But um, I was talking about shows like the Strongsville show. You know, I go to the Strongsville show, and um, I pick up a lot of a huge pick, huge pickups. You know, you saw the video. I uh, was able to sell a few big cards of my collection and pick up the uh, Red Ty Cobb. Uh, along with the uh, the American Caramel, 1921 American Caramel, Walter Johnson, and uh, a couple of the uh, Fatima or Fatima cards. And, um, you know, those are the cards I would just, you know, especially the Ty Cobb and the Walter Johnson, you know, I've been looking at those for since I, since I got them. And I picked up other cards, and they were forgotten. They've kind of been forgotten. I put them in the box. I showed them during my... Uh, video, my pickup video, and then they were f kind of forgotten. And I'm wondering if that happens to you guys. You pick up a group of cards and then one or two of the cards, you just kind of put them back there and leave them in there. And, you know, and, and they're big, beautiful cards. But since I had picked up that Ty Cobb and that Walter Johnson, these were like nothing. And, and this is one of them. It was just, it's a, I picked up a beautiful campy. This campy, you know, at Strongsville. And uh, I thought it was, you know, pretty well centered considering, you know, from the 53 Bowman issue, which is really one of my most favorite issues of all. And yeah, it's not perfectly centered, but the image on this card was just beautiful. So I, I picked it up at Strongsville. And again, I just kind of showed it on my pickup video, put it away in the box and it's been there. And when I went through some of my stuff, when I was putting away or looking at the Marsans, I said, oh, damn, I forgot about this card. Not really forgot about it. I knew I had it. But, you know, sometimes you just put it away and you don't really look at it. And 
if, if I would have picked up this card at any other show, man, I would have been staring at it and just, it would, it would have been a big card for me. But when I picked up that Cobb and, and the uh, Walter Johnson, this one was kind of put off to the side. And, uh, you know, now I figured, you know, I got to take a look at this card, man. I looked at it. I, I loved it at the show. The image of Campy here is just beautiful. You know, the card is in great shape. The corners are, are really nice and sharp. A little bit off-centered. And the back was super nice, super clean. Again, the corners are pretty sharp on this. I mean, it's a six. It's not going to be an eight, but... You know, it's just a little bit off-centered. Not exactly what Dylan would have loved, but the back is perfectly centered. And, you know, it's just a... I saw it at Strongsville. I had to get it. I had to pick it up. And, it, and it's like... <laughs> I pulled it back out. It's not a forgotten card anymore. I'm going to display this one here for a while. Take a good look at it. With uh, some of my other cards, including the Marsans I just showed you. And then the other card that I just kind of forgot about was a huge card, really. If I would have picked this up at a regular show, I would be showing this at, in every video. You know, like like uh, Adam Sang Vintage Sanctuary, Adam, he'll show his cards, you know, 10 times. And that's fine. That's great. But this mantle, another, I picked up this mantle for my mantle run, and... Um, it's the Opeachy mantle, which I did not have, the Opeachy version of it. And yeah, it's, it's way off-centered. And it's way off-centered because Opeachy cards are impossible, you know, to get centered. And, you know, in, in, Dil in Dylan's centering uh, thing, this will be like a 99% difficulty of, of centering for Opeachy cards. Opeachy cards are really, really just off-centered. That's just the way it is in the basketball and the baseball and all of that. But the cool thing about this card is that, um, you know, I, I always look for these, for these Opeaches or any, or the Venezuelans or anything like that for mantle that I could find. And, uh, I, you know, at Strongsville, I made my initial run through and filming some of the cases and stuff. And I didn't really notice this card, it was in with other 66 mantles in the case. And uh, initially I didn't notice it, but then when I, you know, I, as a mantle collector, I started looking and I saw that it was an Opeachy mantle. So I said, I gotta come back to that. I finished my filming and take a good look at that one. And that's what I ended up doing. I came back and I looked at it and I, it was kind of those, there were other mantles, like 66 mantles on top like that, you know? And I think other 66 is just like this one, but they were tops. So I think what happened, you know, some people, I know that, that Theo probably missed, I know Theo I think missed this because he, he left a comment or, or something told me that no, I, I, I didn't, I saw that card but he didn't know it was an Opeach, and I think, you know, I got it for really cheap for an Opeach, and I just think maybe he just didn't get too many offers on it. But it's a beautiful mantle, and you look at it, you know, it's a three and a half mainly because of the centering. It's just a way off center, but, you know, the corners are pretty nice. You know, this one's got a little bit, but I mean, look at the corners on this. For an Opeachy card is pretty nice. You know, you can see a little bit of wear, but not enough for a three and a half. No creases, no nothing. It's just the centering. I looked at the back. Of course, the backs are different in the Opeachy than they are in the, uh, I'll give you guys a good close up of that. They are different. The colors in the Opeachy are lighter than the normal 66. Cards are not as, as bright. And the big difference is in the bottom, it says printed in Canada. So you can see in the bottom of there. And it's TCG, which is Topps uh, Gum Company. And then printed in Canada. 
And then it's got uh, Mantle's 18 World Seri Series homers as a record. So I wanted to share these two guys that have been kind of forgotten since Strongsville. So uh, they're not forgotten now. I'm taking a look at them and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put them up for display there along with the other ones. Now that uh, Cobb and the uh, Walter Johnson are put away in the safe, now it's when I can, you know, enjoy these. So, thanks guys for watching and looking at my, uh, I guess I'll call these the forgotten cards. Thanks for watching guys. Have an awesome, awesome day. I'll catch you on the, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. I'll catch you on the next one.